Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Your Excellency, very much, um, Ambassador um, uh, Baudet, for uh, this uh, initiative. And what you said at the beginning is really music to my ears uh, in your opening remarks. Christina, my good friend, uh, Mark, we met before, and we value the work of your organization. And uh, also, um, uh, Reverend Messenger um, uh, Girsa from the Permanent Observer Mission of the Holy See, we thank you very much. Uh, also, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that to be in this platform and to be discussing all these important um, issues um, um, here on behalf of the High Representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. So thank you for inviting us. Um, the, the topic that you had uh, just mentioned or the topic that you are um, discussing today is a very important topic, uh, the importance of interreligious and intercultural dialogue is the uh, core of the mandate. Promoting intercultural and interreligious dialogue is the core of the mandate of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations um, since its inception more than 10 years ago. And um, the high-level group of experts which uh, uh, created uh, the Alliance of Civilization and uh, uh, put guidelines to its mandate had realized that religious leaders in particular play a major role in uh, the promotion of uh, diversity, tolerance, respect of the other, not, rather than fear of the other. And when you look at the state of affairs uh, that we see right now, uh, we see that this particular topic, which is interreligious dialogue, is um, a topic which is is, has an unparalleled uh, importance. Uh, you see the state of affairs where we see wars, we see conflicts, we see hate speech, um, uh, our modern history is increasingly characterized by manifestations of violence and intolerance, and the public discourse has been culturally and religiously intolerant rhetoric, and increasingly so. And um, once the rhetoric um, uh, and xenophobic rhetoric um, uh, prevails, we see that it starts a uh, or triggers some sort of the, a, the, a cycle of violence. And the cycle of violence will go on. Um, um, and unless we stop it, we will never have peace, we will never have security, we will never have the stability that we all aim at, and which are the pillars of uh, the United Nations uh, in general. So from, 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 from um, having said that, this is why the role of the religious leaders have to be promoted. Uh, within uh, their communities, they have to have the support of the governments where they work, uh, uh, the governments in the countries in which they work, because the support of the government is very important. Collaboration with the government is very important. And sometimes we see that in certain, certain governments do not empower the religious leaders, but also the religious leaders have to practice their role with a kind of responsibility because they do have an influence in the public discourse. They do have influence on youth. And with the rising wave of extremism, particularly with Daesh, and how they, uh, they managed and succeeded in recruiting young people, many of these people had been recruited um, um, through um, public places of worship at some, at some point. And that's why the religious, it is there where the religious leaders have play, has to play a very good, uh, a very important role in moderating the way they address religious issues. In the way they address, we have to, uh, let's say, reform the way that we address those important issues because the recipients who are basically youth are the ones who are going to be targeted by extremists. We have to give them the power. We have to give them the, the right knowledge. We have to give them the correct interpretation of the holy texts so that they do know what they are doing. So this is where, where I think the religious leaders is very important. The United Nations Alliance of Civilization reala realizes the importance of interreligious dialogue and intercultural dialogue. And that's why we were considered as a basic and a main platform. Uh, we created a platform for religious leaders to discuss several issues relevant to, um, 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 to um, uh, the, the mandate of the alliance in, in the sense that they um, promote tolerance. We encourage them to, 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 uh, to promote tolerance, to promote diversity, and to promote 
uh, respect uh, of the other. I just want to give you an example of a most recent um, endeavor that we have done uh, that we have done recently, and it was um, 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 uh, an, a meeting and an initiative that was organized by the government of Spain, the foreign ministry of the government of Spain, and we were very proud to be part of this initiative. Just a couple of months ago, in November, we hosted in the beautiful coastal city of Alicante in Spain, a summit for religious leaders. Um, and for the first time, we had a number, more than uh, 30 religious leaders representing the three Abrahamic faiths, mm -hmm. Christians, Jews, and Muslims from the Middle East. And when I say the Middle East, I particularly, the target of that um, uh, meeting was to bring Palestinians and Israelis um, and to bring um, uh, uh, Jordanians, and these were the religious leaders that were presenting these three uh, entities, uh, to talk together in a, in, a, in a meeting, in a summit, and for the first time they came up with a declaration acknowledging how important is uh, uh, the role of religious leaders and that the religious leaders have to play a role in the political uh, process when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And uh, uh, this acknowledgement, we are trying to build on it because we consider that this is a first step. It's not an end in itself. We should continue this dialogue. We should continue to enhance and promote dialogue of those uh, religious um, uh, entities, because at the end of the day, um, they do play a role, they do have an influence, and to, ig to ignore the role that the religious leaders are doing in, um, in conflicts that are as lasting as that of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, it would, be, um, it, would, it, it would not lead to uh, uh, the viable or the sustainable so solution that we are uh, aiming to have. Um, I would like to leave, to leave it there. I am happy to be answering any questions, if there are any questions about the work of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. Thank you very much.